last year, it's been a year, uh, so I'd put it in 16. Um, he got killed. Now, in your world, you don't have any response because you say you believe in dead raises, but you've never seen one. Yeah. All right, I'm showing you one. And it's my oldest grandchild got killed by killer bees. He was out working, because that's what you do if you were with me, you're going to work. So we have a farm that was given to us in Mexico. We raised food on it for the poor. And we do everything, everything for the poor. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, rich people that lost, made dumb mistakes and lost all their money. Now they poor, so you feed them as well. It's the same. It's all the same. Whoever's hungry. And so he's out work. I'm in Europe. He's out working and like he's supposed to do because he decided to work with us. That's different than being in the kitchen with Grandma. You understand? Then different than being in the house doing school. That's your shirt. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost has taught us how to raise, taught me and other people around me how to raise young people into soldiers. And that's what I do. And I teach them to de raise the dead. And um, in this case, my wife called me and the boy had been killed. And uh, him standing here in front of you uh, is a testament of death is not final. Jesus is. Yeah. And so I want him to testify to you what it feels like to be called back from the dead. Is that all right? Yes. Because my version has got lots of additives. His don't. Because I'm real animated. He's not too animated. He's like his dad and his grandma. Business. <laughs> Me, I'm business, but you don't get there easy. Because <laughs> I'm too strict. I will run you off if you start out on the business side of mine. I have to play a little first so you can tolerate it. So, uh, I want you to hear him say how it happened. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> you won't, <old> boy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I'm glad to be here with all of you. We had an awesome service last night. <clears throat> but, uh, I was out working on my grandpa's ranch, chopping on our tractor. And evidently I got too close to the bees because they all attacked me, the whole hive did. Um, and I jumped off the tractor and took off running. Well, the tractor was still going and chopped down two of my grandpa's orange trees. Um, that ain't what you do. <laughs> yeah, he talked to me about that afterwards. Um, <laughs> And so I realized I need to jump. At that point, they had a couple had stung me, but not too many. So I ran, jumped back on the tractor, cut it off, and took off running. Well, without the noise of the tractor distracting them, they all attacked me and followed me. And I don't know how many times they stung me, but I was pulling stick the stingers out for days. Um, I was about a quarter mile from the house. By the time I made it to the house, I couldn't walk straight. I couldn't see straight. I barely made it in the house, found my aunt and my grandma. <clears throat> and the last thing I remember telling them is, I can't breathe. My throat's closing off. I love you, boy. <laughs> and then all I remember after that is just an overwhelming peace, the peace of God. <coughs> I didn't feel any more pain or anything. But then, all of a sudden, I started hearing my grandpa's voice saying, come back to me, come back to me. Well, I didn't realize that I had died. I had no idea that I had died. 
all I knew is that I was in the most peace I've ever felt. He kept saying, come back to me, come back to me. I'm like, I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, well, he's in Europe. Why can't I hear his voice? And then I realized I started being able to hear my grandma's voice and my aunt's voice. And I realized I wasn't breathing. I could hear them, but I wasn't breathing. Awesome. And so then I started realizing that I'm, I'm dead. And so I started trying to answer, trying to answer, and then, then I just kept trying and trying. <clears throat> and then finally, instantly, Come on. my throat opened up, Come and I was on. able to take that first breath again. Come on. Wow. And I, I answered my grandpa and <laughs> answered my grandma. And it, it really... Taught me that there's no reason to fear death. Come on, boy. Because you never, you're not going to see it coming to you. You're not going to know when it's about to hit you unless God tells you or something. And also what I learned from that is that if you're in the path where God wants you to be, if he's not done with you, if you die, he will bring you back. And so to fear death is only holding yourself back from what God wants you to do. Come on. So I want to encourage you to not fear death. You're always going to have fear. But my grandpa's taught me since I was little, you're always going to have fear. It matters what you do with that fear, whether it's right or wrong. And then a couple of days after that happened, I went and did a huge hike in the mountains preaching. And so, it's awesome. I want to bless you, and I want to encourage you. Thank you very much. It's pretty awesome to have such good relationships with your family. You, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It is, because that old boy, you know, when y'all look at him, you see this old big ox fella. That's not what I see. I have a picture on my refrigerator of him in the diaper. <laughs> He's got my cowboy boots on and they all the way up his thighs. <laughs> Both hands are in my refrigerator. <laughs> and we took a picture. That's how I see him. <laughs> it, it, and it's awesome. So I'm going to tell you something. When my wife called me on the phone, uh, you, you, can, you can disagree with me, the way I talk, my aggression, my, my rudeness, my wildness. I'm all right with you doing that. It's okay. It is. It's all right. You can have your opinion, but listen to me, chump. <laughs> that is absolutely all it is. Because when my wife called me, we've been married 45 years, or 46, sorry, Mom. And uh, when she called me and that phone buzzed and I looked on that face of that woman, I know her. I have been gone off preaching for like seven months or so or eight, a long time. But I know her <clears throat> and I know what she's thinking, but I don't know this face. This is the biggest price we've ever paid. And I have lost one of my grandkids. We've buried people. It's, I mean, it's, we've been down the hard trail. I've died twice and been raised from the dead twice. And all of that's impressive. But the look on her face, I have no way to describe to you the, what hell was fixing to pay because I'm going to give it to them. Yeah, now, I'm not the kind of guy that pays like you with oohs and ahs and I'm the guy that picks up 44 and I go to walking because I, I am through talking. You got to understand that. And, and you don't like that kind of language, but the 44 in this case wasn't a gun. It's me grabbing the gates of hell and ripping them off. You understand? 
because my wife ain't, this ain't happening. And, but you, gotta, you can't do nothing about death. Now you, there's lots of things we can do something about, but that's one you can't. You know, when I was calling that boy back, because my wife said, it's a long story, but I told Corbin, because he, he was, he's only, what are you, 50, 40, what are you? 20, 20. Because <laughs> <laughs> see, I told the kid, you can't break the rules. And, and I know you like to stay on the line. You like to think you're this free person and nobody can corral you and tell you what to do. It's evident. You ain't going anywhere. You, you don't have any traction. It, things are not working for you. you. Something needs to change. We need traction. We don't need to be okay. We need to be healing the sick and raising the dead and casting out demons. We are sons of God. Amen. We're not okay. Dude, what's wrong with you? Where'd you get that? Whoever taught you that, you need to slap them. <laughs> you need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need to be accomplished in the works of the book of Acts. Shakaba. And so I told that boy, you broke the rule, Jack. You can't do that now. God promised you 70 years, and if you're strong, and he is, You'll probably make at least 80. So you, you can't do this. You cannot submit. And in y'all's world, that sounds as foreign and as a farce as anything. But the difference is, I got my kid back. And that ain't no challenge. You're not going to get him back in the current condition of the church. We have to go to Jesus for this. This is something heaven has to perform. And I'm, I, I, I see dead raising is easy uh, because I've been around it so much. It's just commonplace to us. It's natural, more natural to us. Uh, boy, that look on my wife's face, that changed my life. And him coming back, what y'all don't know about those killer bees is they hit the noise. Like in this room, if a swarm came in, that's what they're going to hit. You see that over there? It's that baby. They're not going to hit me because I'm going to be quiet. I know better. But my responsibility is to protect that baby. Understand, right? That's right. And it's yours. But I see us giving up and being okay and sidelining and taking us a lighter trail, a softer approach. Dude, go straight up the mountain in the guns. Let's do it. Come on. Yeah. If they can take us out, I need to see it. You ain't got proof they can stop me. I've got some experience. It says otherwise. They will eventually, but it's not today. And so... When my grandson, the, the, what happened is because of the pain, he was giving up some noise and they attacked the hot, which is the breath. They went down his throat, stung him all in his throat, closed it up tight. It's, that's not going to relax. You, any of y'all medical in here, you know he had to have shots and it takes a minute for that stuff to work. And for, for it to relax the way it did, there had to be a miracle involved and it was for us because he was dead. It wasn't two hours, but it was over an hour and a half or right in there. And, he, and it just relaxed, and the air came. He spoke to me, and, it, and he's alive. Do you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. All right, then let's start all over in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, first three words. Anybody remember what they say? It is he forever. <laughs> in, in Psalms... You see, I didn't even hear her. Y'all see that? <laughs> Psalms 119, verse 89. What's the word? Forever. All right. Put 
Put that one up, please, in Psalms uh, 119, verse 89. Can you do that? Can you split that screen? No? All right, we'll do it later. What does it say? Read that to me, someone. Oh, they didn't put the right verse up yet. Psalms 119, verse 89. Ta-ta-ta! Punch that button, boy. <laughs> it's all right, it's coming. It's all right. There it is. Now read that one to me. Say it again. Say it again to me. So if I read this right, it's not open for discussion. It's a settled issue. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Yeah. Or your opinion can alter God. What is it? Y'all's vote can alter God. Y'all's group of beauty. Because <laughs> <laughs> y'all are pretty people. California, Central Coast. Y'all are the pretty ones. <laughs> How's that going for you? <laughs> going all right in certain circumstances, I guess. I don't know why y'all ain't black, but it's coffee as y'all drink. <laughs> Lord have mercy. What's wrong with you? Holy. <laughs> Holy. So let's start all over, ready? My name's David. Things are good for me. What does it say in verse 89? Forever, stop right there. Let's go over that word a minute. What does it mean? Maybe, question mark, hopefully, man, it'd be nice if it was real. Dude, you, you, your doubt, your worry, your fear, your instability doesn't affect heaven. And so I'm not against you and I'm not going to curse you. I realize I'm getting on the edge of it, but I'm not. I'm going to back up. I bless this land. I'm not here to curse you. You're, you're not right. You need Jesus. And that's what I'm going to work on. I'm not trying to fix you because that's been tried before, hasn't it? Shaka ba. Holy Ghost. So how long is this going to last, this word of God? Forever. Where is it settled? Forever. And then what good is it to have a community talk about it? About what percentage of it are we going to go with? We're going to do it all. And it includes dead raising. That's New Testament. And Old Testament, it's both, both covenants. Life is, life's in both covenants. So what I'd like to do is throw that picture of that young lady up there now. Can you do that, please? I want to show you something. Um, there you go. You see that young girl there? She's... Uh, she, she, their family used to be Amish, and I work uh, with the Amish and the Mennonites in uh, Pennsylvania and uh, New York and Ohio and around. Uh, I, really, I don't know how they chose me or why, but they chose me, one of their leaders did, in their movement of these people that got blasted with the Holy Ghost. One of them, I don't know how they even got a hold of me because I am so out of their world. But they chose me and I went there and miracles just started flowing. And, and then they started having issues with elders from all, all over the place. And so I went up there and helped them organize and got them, got them mar marching. And so we're, 
We're soul, winning souls, we're healing the sick, we're raising the dead, and we're casting out devils. That's what we do. All right? It's one of the things I do is help these uh, uh, ex-Amish people. And so this girl, it's, it was a thing like this, similar meeting. We was in, uh, it's right by Gettysburg, uh, PA over there. Uh, Abbottstown is the town. It's about 20 minutes from Gettysburg. And the um, place was packed. It was big old, lots of, lots of people. It was awesome. Fire is everywhere. It's been uh, some really good stuff happening. And, but it's just thousands of articles are up on the thing. And in walk some of the Amish people that I work with. They don't fit the culture anywhere. They're their own culture, and they're not interested in yours. But somehow they let us in. My wife goes with me, and we go in there, and it's awesome. All right. But this girl's mom is first generation breakaway full of the Holy Ghost out of the Amish, right? Now, I see the family when they walk in because you, you can't miss them. All the little boys look exactly like their dad, same kind of clothes, the, mom, the girls look like their mom. And, and they all walk in a line and they, and they sit in the, together and you can't miss them. And it's awesome. I like it. Uh, it's wonderful. But I noticed the mom, she come in and, for, and I'd never seen one of the women radar. Uh, you freer women. Uh, you go somewhere, your, your eyes are all over the place, but these other... Uh, 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 people <laughs> from different beliefs uh, don't radar. These women don't. But I saw her come in carrying this girl, but it, she didn't look like this. What I, what I saw was this skin and bone thing with gray color. I, I couldn't tell if it was a girl or a boy. I couldn't tell what it was because it was so emaciated and twisted, and she's looking, and I've never seen one of them do it. I was, I was watching, I was impressed, because it was such a breach of uh, who they are. But what, I, what, I, what, I, what, what bothered me was, was when she saw me, she locked. She didn't, it was it. She was looking for me. And I go, oh my God. So I took off, <laughs> and I went and found Miss Hogan, and I'm peeking around. Because this is going to cause trouble. And I'm normally all right with trouble. But that woman walked up and she said, I need you, Brother David. I said, that's been evident ever since you walked in. I, what, do you, what do you want? What are you doing? I mean, it's evident what she wants. This girl is almost dead. They don't do doctors. They don't do medicine. And this girl is going to die probably in in the service. I mean, she was rough looking. And she thrust that child at me, this girl here, who is now, of course, healthy and healed, but she had leukemia. Advanced. It was over. I mean, uh, it, was, it was bad news. So I take this child, this girl, at this picture, she's 15. When I got my hands on her, she was 13. And, and um, I'm holding her, and the mama just falls on the ground and is worshiping God. And I'm standing, all the, you know, 1,000 people watching. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> and, and so I lay the girl down on the thing. And uh, so during the service, I'm walking back and forth like you see me doing now, and every time I go by her, I touch her, Jesus, and just keep on doing my thing. This girl right here. Every time I go by her, I just touch her, Jesus, and I keep talking, Jesus, preaching. Go back by, Jesus. Come back by, Jesus. And then after a while, the mom comes, gets the girl, picks her up, they leave. I didn't see him again. A few months after that, my daughter-in-law, his mama, uh, I met them. They had been out, gone preaching somewhere around the world. I don't know where. And uh, so I met them, uh, family time thing. 
And my daughter-in-law comes up to me, Brother David, have you heard the miracle? I said, no, I don't hear miracles. I pray. I don't chase miracles. They chase me. That's what your Bible says. They follow those who believe. That's what your Bible says. And so uh, she said, do you remember praying for that girl with leukemia? And I go, no, 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 no. Tell me some more. She, oh, the Amish, oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was, that was a hardly, that was a, not a very happy day. That was uncomfortable. And, uh, well, Brother David, she's been healed. They carried her to the doctor, uh, and the doctor get, just sent her home because she was past anything they could do. And, and they, about three or four days after we prayed for her, there's, there's a thing I'm going to talk to you about right now called the glowing man. You don't know the glowing man because there's not one Bible verse that calls him that. But there is verses that speak of men whose faces shine like, like a light and who, who angelic beings come in their presence. The glow fills the place. And, and people that don't know the Bible call them glowing men. Uh, because they look like a man in that form, but they're glowing like lights. The glowing man walked into this girl's room with her and touched her and fire went through her and burned a leukemia out of her. <laughs> yeah. And a, a few days ago, I was up there with them. Uh... And she walked up to me, and I didn't know her, so I moved out of the way. And, and she started, I was backing away. I was trying to find Miss Hogan again. <laughs> and uh, and it, she's the girl that was almost dead with leukemia, and there she is alive. See that? <laughs> Healthy. Her memory is amazing. She's now got graduated with honors and all of this. It's a pretty nice deal. That's who Jesus is for you. You hear me? I said, you hear me? So that's what we're going to do here tonight is that, okay? And that that happened to Corbin. Uh, it's the word of God that's going to do this for us, with us, okay? And I'm going to tell you another story in a minute, but I want to... Uh, go over to, uh, um, I think it's in Isaiah, Isaiah 40, fellas. That's it, Isaiah 40, in verse 5. Because in, in Psalms 119 in verse 89, it says, forever, O Lord. Your word is settled. Does it say that? I read that. Let y'all read that a while ago. Y'all read it, right? All right. Now, here in Isaiah, y'all there? Yes, good. And the glory, the majesty, the splendor. Say that with me. Glory. glory. Come to me. Majesty. Come to me. Splendor. Come to me. I'm a son of God. And I receive you, mercy. I mercy. See, I've learned over the last 45 years uh, doing this uh, is you pray the word of God. God's word is settled. It's impossible for him to lie to us. It's not going to ever be breached or broken. So what we have to do is line us up with what it says. And that's how it works. Did you hear me? You need to learn how to pray what God spoke and men wrote it down and put it in book form for us to understand that it's God's holy word and it's settled word. 
you hear me? Yes, sir. And the glory. Say glory. glory. And the majesty. Say majesty. majesty. And the splendor. Say splendor. splendor. What's this? Of the Lord. Say it. Of the Lord. Oh, those are all great things, but what does it say about it? So, where is it? It's in that little girl that got healed. It's in my grandson that got raised from the dead. It's being revealed, but it's being missed by a lust or a feed me more than everybody else. I'm more worthy. There, move self-importance and self-worth and fall on your face to his mercy. Let his glory, majesty, and splendor come to you. Let him reveal himself, his word to you. Please. Because I'm fixing to tell you a story uh, that I got myself involved in that it's really dead gummit because I really believe I have rights and I'm a son and I'm one of the favorite and best sons. I believe that. So are you if you love Jesus, unless you're one of them worm dog people. Because every religion out there to keep you under control keeps you beat down by calling you, you know, I'm just a dog, oh, praise the Lord. Serious? You need to get born again then and quit being a dog. Matthew. Jacob said, I'm just a worm, oh, Lord. True statement. He didn't have the Holy Ghost. He wasn't born again. He wasn't filled with the blood coming of the Lamb of God and made to be the righteousness of God in Christ. I am. You think you're better than they are? Absolutely. Not because of me, because of the covenant I'm in. It has nothing to do with me or my family or yours. Or all of us combined is not enough. It's him. I done read it to you like 600 times. Okay, we'll start over then. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six. First three words. <laughs> Say it. Say it. Psalms one nineteen, verse eighty nine. Where you at forever? Shababa. I get you. What's the first word? Psalms 119, verse 89. First word. Forever. Say it again. Forever. Say it again. Shukaba. <laughs> Are we embarrassed? Are we okay? Okay. I have to check with her because I don't get embarrassed and don't have fear of man, so I don't know what that feels like. It's, to me, it's a waste of energy, that foolishness. I don't do that. So I check with my wife. She says, we're okay. We're fine. We're good. Holy. 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 My forever is gone. I got to do something else. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter, forgot, three. <laughs> Verse what? Six. First three words. Psalms 119, Verse 89. First word. Y'all are getting this word of God yet? Yeah. I'm telling you, this is truth. It's settled. It ain't no discussion. Y'all spend endless hours in discussing this stuff. Why? Dude, do it. It's settled. Yeah. Pfft. yeah. Golly. Duh. <laughs> 
So, verse 5 of the glory deal. Um, Isaiah 40, verse 5. The glory, the majesty, the splendor. Say it. Of whom? The Lord. What's going to happen? Shall be and look what it says. This is interesting. This thing. All flesh shall see it. Yes. Why is it cooped up in only a couple of churches? Why is it that only certain meetings with particular type of music and People who believe a particular way, does this happen to? What's up with that? This is broader than that. This is a move of God that's coming to this planet that you're not going to hide in the church closet. And we're going to do it. We're going to step into it and usher it in. We're going to call it in. Say it. Glory. Glory. Majesty. Splendor, Splendor. Come, come to me, to, me. to, us. to us, now. now. That'd be great. In the last four years, I have been multiplied five times. That didn't even raise his eyebrows. I was hoping his eyebrows was up. <laughs> One time, I was in three places at the same day. Whoa. Wait a minute. At the same time, in three different continents. Oops. <laughs> there you go. Now I got you mad. Can't get rid of you on the dead raising. Can't get rid of you on the leukemia. I'll get rid of you on this one. <laughs> it's not my fault. You know, Pastor Maldonado down in Miami, biggest uh, Latino church in the, I don't know if it's the world or not, but it's close, 20 grand. Uh, I was down there at this thing. And there was everybody, wow, it was a bunch of important folks there talking I did my time. I don't know why I got a session. I'm serious because them people are important. And uh, I go in there. We have, they have this big room full of these dainties and I don't know, lots of money involved. I told my team, don't eat a grape. <laughs> Not even one. Don't you do it. And so we're standing over there. We soldiers. We're on the wall. We got the PowerPoint. We're watching. We, you're not getting behind us. You're not going to put your bullets through the wall and get us because we made sure they were concrete. And this big old guy gets up. He's a, a pastor of this, this uh, largest church in Guatemala. It's in Gu uh, La Ciudad de Guatemala. It's, uh, it's lots of thousands of people. He comes walking over to me. I know the guy. And he says to me, uh, I want to thank you for coming to my church. And I look at him. No, I know you, but I ain't never been to your church. <laughs> oh, boy, your modesty, he says. Your humility, man, he says, it's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> but I've never been there. He just flipped his phone out, hit the play button, and there I am on stage at his church with a guitar, and I don't play the guitar. <laughs> he said, that song you introduced, there's been thousands of people saved. It's been quite amazing, the power of God that came with that. And I'm just looking at him. Because <laughs> I'm sitting there looking at me on his phone in his church. I said, I need the date and time on that, will you? <laughs> All right. That, that, that's just the beginning of sorrows for you unbelievers. Oh, my God. Uh, this is going to deal with your unbelief. You are going to all of a sudden have to go to the toilet. And all we're going to hear, all we're going to hear is the keys jingling, bud. I'm running you off. You are out of here. 
This is for the people seeking the glory. This is you that want the splendor and the majesty. This is for you. This is not for scumbag enemy unbelief. Say what? You didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Unbelief is your enemy. You're never ordered to love unbelief. Live with it. So, um, so the, he gave me a copy of that thing, and we got the time and date off his phone, and, and so I went to my date book. I'm in Germany. It yoked beating the, the place where it was with uh, Roland. And uh, it's below Stuttgart, about 30, about 25, 30 minutes, maybe, below Stuttgart in Germany. And, and we have this big conference. Went the same exact day. And, okay, that's, that's, that's not, that ain't awesome. That ain't awesome. This is not, this is not okay. This is not okay for God to use me like that. <laughs> because I have no possible way to reference this. He does what he wants to, and he don't care about asking you your opinion. I know y'all gonna put a committee together about it and have me voted out, but you know what? I never was voted in. <laughs> But if you must, <laughs> do your incessant bickering over it, get you some more coffee. Evidently, you're not going to turn black. <laughs> so, I go home finally, right? And I get down in our work in Mexico, and I have this path. I was always pulled together. 500 or 1,000 pastors and just let them handle me. Just eat with them and just be with them. And I don't know the right word y'all call it. Y'all, I don't know, fellowship? Is that what y'all? <laughs> I don't Thank you. <laughs> and so... One of the pastors, he's been with me for a number of years uh, in a very hard area, uh, meaning they kill Christians. And he comes up to me, and I'm expecting him to tell me some war stories, right? He says, I want to tell you thank you. I said, you know, I've been gone, right? I said, okay, what are you thanking me for? You know, I am so caught off guard by God's splendor. His majesty is completely out of control. He just don't, he just goes around the planet being awesome. Yeah. I don't know what's up with him. He absolutely, he, he didn't let me and my elders vote on it. Of course we would have let him. I said, I need some information. He said, well, he handed me a receipt. Now, what I do in triplicate with my people to keep integrity at the highest possible level is everybody that receives money or goods or materials for building churches or even Bibles and tracts has to sign with a witness. All right, that's what we do to keep integrity in place. Otherwise, somebody will sell that stuff and keep the money and be like whatever normal day. I think his name is Judas or something. Uh, seems like. One in 12. So, I said, let me see that. And I'm looking at that, uh, and I told my son Jody, check this date. Do you haven't figured out what day it is yet? It's the day I'm in Germany close to Stuttgart, it's the same day I was in Guatemala, and it's the same day I came up driving in a village in a tractor trailer flatbed with a load of material to build their church. 
I said, you think that was me? He said, oh, no, it was you. Look at that signature. And I look at the signature. Yeah, it was me. I signed it. I said, I'm coming. I'll be there tomorrow. My schedule has changed officially. I want to see this church. It can't be real. It's got to be where you can at least put your hand through it or something. It's got to be like a movie, right? So I get there. And, of course, it's a big deal, and all the people come, and they want to do a dedication because I'm there. And so I'll go around, and I'm touching every block because I didn't do that. This one, this me didn't. In one day, three of me are working in three locations, Central America. <laughs> Don't this just make you mad? <laughs> Central America, Mexico, and Europe. That's just not right for that to happen. Do you understand? So I need you to say this with me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Please send the glory. Please send the majesty. That's the only way you can describe these kind of miracles. My grandson being raised from the dead and the, the, me in three different places, and I never even felt the jet lag of any of it. I, I never, I, I, I'm telling you, there's no memory, there's no dreams, there's, it's just me and Stuttgart preaching. But I have the video and the paperwork, I have the church building in my hands. I helped them unload the material, we prayed, I ate with them, and I got in a tractor trailer. He said, you know, Brother Hogan, how you always hooting, woo-hoo! He was just doing it till we, we was just standing there amazed at you driving so fast. I said, well, that's right, I do drive fast. <laughs> so you unbelievers, that's, that's for you. <laughs> but I got a nothing for you. If, you. if you're gonna tempt me by sitting there, I'm gonna light up on you. Because I am not afraid of unbelief in witchcraft. Do you understand me? Bring it. Shakaba. So it says right here in my Bible. All flesh shall see it together. Say, I want to be in that. Say it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So it's settled. It's his word. It's not going to change or be altered. Do you understand? All right. Verse 6. Y'all finally there? And the voices say, cry, prophesy. And I said, what shall I cry? The voice. <clears throat> Since I've been in your presence, I've been proclaiming his amazing. It is he forever goodness. And I'm not going to stop. This is the word of the Lord for you. There's a third wave coming to you. Energy's going to happen. There's a new power settling on the planet. The prophets, seven prophets, different lands, each one of them. I didn't know, I knew two of the seven uh, have told me, all of them the same word, the third wave is crashing, it's imminent. So I need, I'm stepping into it. I am proclaiming it. I'm calling the glory, the splendor, the majesty. Come to us, great one. Come to us. We speak to the heavens in central California. Come, great one. Split the skies, heaven. All flesh is frail as grass. So you need to move your self-importance and your greatness Understand that it's he who gives us strength. It's he who gives us breath. It is he who gives us life. He revives us. He calls us to life and godliness. It is him. All flesh is as frail as the grass and all that makes it attractive it's kindness, it's goodwill, it's mercies from God, it's glory, comeliness, however good. What's this? 
is transitory. See, that's the word that you don't like. That means it's possible to lose it. And that word is the one you don't want to deal with. That's why I'm so adamant about us getting on our face to Jesus. I'm talking about with the dead being raised, with blind, glowing men. This year, uh, a year from April, so it's not even been a year, there's been five manifestations of angels in physical form in the places I've been. They're, they're on, the, it's, it's, it's happening more. They, it's, things are agitated. Spiritually, the negative is really agitated. That's what all this problem is, and that's why fear is trying to settle on you. But you gotta understand, the reason hell is agitated and this stuff's happening is because heaven is coming at us. You cannot be distracted with the presence of evil. You must anticipate the glory and grandeur and splendor of heaven. The majesty has to be received. <sighs> and it says in my Bible, seven, verse seven, the grass withers, so does, flower fades. Boy, I was just up there hiking in y'all's uh, thing up there. And boy, I got on this one valley. Golly, there was at least nine different colors of flowers. I'm a flower person. My, my wife, I bought her a, ro a dozen or two dozen, depending on how much money I had at the time, every week for 30 weeks out from our wedding. I ordered them from every state in the United States. I'm telling you. I have this deal about them. They're just beautiful. But they do wither. They fade away. And you got to have new ones. <laughs> Don't you, Mom? Right. <laughs> How was that? Not, say it. That was nice. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Fellas, you have to think up ways to impress them. And I'm pretty active in my thought patterns. <laughs> so we'll go on. So it's, <laughs> look what it says. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, say it, breathe on me, say it. Breath of heaven, come to me. Glory, splendor, majesty, come to me. Verse eight. The grass withers, the flower fades. But guess what? The word of the Lord. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, y'all done tried to vote it out twice and it didn't work. Forever. Now we need to go to another verse. It's somewhere. Uh, hopefully you're prophetic. <laughs> I'm thinking it's First Peter. That sounds good. Maybe one, one twenty-five, maybe twenty-four, <laughs> something like that. Hopefully that's right. Well, that app wasn't the one. Let's try another one. Was it, so it's uh, First Peter. Ah, you're right. I do. First Peter chapter one. Got it. I think so. And verse something, hang on. Uh, verse 23, let's do an uncomfortable one. <laughs> you have been regenerated, born again, not from mortal seed, sperm, but from that is immortal. Say it. I'm immortal. Say it. I'm immortal. Say it. I'm immortal. Say it again. I'm Why? Because it is he, huh? Forever. It is he. Forever. Immortal. It's a true statement. Sorry, y'all quitters. 
you're, you probably have a legitimate reason to quit. It's just, it's just demonic, that's all. Verse 24, it says these words, you ready? All flesh, mankind, is like grass. Wait a minute, didn't we just read that somewhere? Seems like it was in Isaiah, right? Something. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it was Isaiah 40, verse 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, but I quit because I got bored with it. <laughs> <laughs> It says, verse 24, all flesh is like grass. All its glory. See, it doesn't matter if somebody walks through that door in a minute and just has a check for $142 million and walks up, hands it spontaneously to one of you. They're not going to pick me because I'm going to be looking at them and asking them for it. <laughs> Here, pick me, choose me. I want it. And all that's going to happen to you after they give you that clear profit of $142 million and its power that's going to dump on you as you waste it. Yeah. It's going to fade. Yeah. It's not permanent. It's transitory. It will leave you. The Bible's clear. The scepter of the king doesn't last to the same family through all generations. It changes. It moves around. So you need to understand it is he forever. It's his immortality that we're walking in. Do you understand? It's his word that is settled. Clear? All right, it says the grass with the flower drop off, but the word, oh, here we are again back on that. They must be stickler, have a stickler about this or something. What a surprise. Verse, <laughs> verse 25. The word of the Lord, the divine instruction, the gospel. What does it do? You can live it, believe it, and walk it, and it never fades. I've been at this a long time, and it's only getting stronger. I got whacked with the Holy Ghost when I was a kid. I was 23 years old. I mean, level, picked up and picked up in the air. I'm a gun-toting individual. <laughs> that was close. It almost came out. <laughs> but thank God Miss Hogan's here to hold my tact in place. I got whacked by the Holy Ghost. You understand? I got lit on fire. And I went down like a buzzsaw into these demons and they whooped the fire out of me. Then I got trained by the mercy of God how to do this, how to be immortal, how to walk in his glorious goodness and power, how to walk in majesty and splendor. <laughs> it's a true statement. Holy. When I get talking about this here, you see how it lights me up. It, it pleases me that I've been chosen and blessed by God's mercy to, to live in this this long. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. There's been many, many failures, but there's never been no stoppage. I have not been 100% successful at 100% of the time, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm blessed. Do you hear me? I know what it's like to take the shovel and bury my friends and my grandkids and everybody else. I know how to do that. And it, it's, it sucks. It's horrible. But let me tell you what it's like when he gives you one back. Can I do that? It is awesome to have him back from the dead. Because the word of the Lord endures forever. You hear me? Yeah. Now, that I have lit up on you like I have, <laughs> let me tell you about the King of Kings. Can I do that? Yeah. I was over there in South Africa. I had just left Miss Heidi and had some really good time over there and Pimba and that and out in some bush, did some stuff. Went over there, went with Brother uh, uh, Supresa up there. In Nail Sprit, we did some stuff. It was awesome. And I was bouncing around here and there. I walked with some lines. I'm not going to tell you about it, but listen, every one of you need that as well. 
oh my God. When them lions came, and you're in a wild, it's a wild environment, they're wild lions, and that thing come running up on me. You really think you're tough till you get upside that thing. Three inch teeth sitting on the ground looking, I mean, this close, growling. <sighs> oh my God. I'm just looking at that thing. Are you serious? Four hundred pound beast fixing to eat my leg, and the other lion beside her gonna have the other one. It's gonna happen. And I asked that guy standing there with the stick, you know, the, it's a little bitty sticks so we all had on me. He, I said to him, "You do this every day?" He said, "I do." I said, "You're an idiot." <laughs> Lions are there growling at us. I mean, uh, Dude, what's wrong with you? Do this every day. I said, how come you're not bit? He said, because a lion knows if you're afraid or not. I said, why didn't I get bit? He said, because you're not afraid. I said, I feel fear. He said, you do. But you're not showing fear. Because a lion would have already bit you. So we start, this guy walks up, he, he's from the north. He's, he's a, he, he's a, he, these lion people are weird. He walks, starts walking and he calls them these wild lions. Come with me. Did, he was there. Did, didn't it happen? And, and those lions started following this guy. And they told us, you have to follow him or the lions will eat you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're walking right behind these lions. Finally, that guy turns around and says, get the tail. I said, I ain't doing it. I said, Corbin, get the tail. <laughs> Is that true? What'd you do? You got the tail. He's more afraid of me than the lion, and that's the way it should be. That's a true, that's a true way to look at life. That's the real thing. That lion only eats you once. I'll keep eating. <laughs> but if you could walk, feel the power, the immenseness of these beasts, because you're walking with them. It makes you feel alive, boy. Oh, my God. Whew, don't do it. <laughs> Some of y'all get eat. So, holy, I'm not. I'm not no snack for no dead gummit lion. So, so let's forget the lions. Let's do something else. It was really awesome, though. Look, I got, I got invited to this place, and I preach every day somewhere, and th this day, what was the name of that place, uh, Corbin, um, down at the, at the bottom? New London? That's it. New London, South Africa. It's, it's as far south as you can go on the Indian Ocean side of Africa. And, you know, and I, I got down there, and I've been knowing these folks for probably seven or eight years, and good people and so uh we don't do a conference with them and they want it and they want fire and i'm in on all that good let's do it but they brought something up they said uh, we have you scheduled to do something else beside this conference i said who cares <laughs> well you might i said all right let's talk about it we're going to this trans sky now, Thrun Sky is a piece of earth uh, about half the size of this state here. None of y'all probably know where that's at. It's the birthplace of Nelson Mandela. And it's, uh, it's, it's one of the first locations where the, some of the war was done between the blacks and the Europeans and, the, and between the different European nations and uh, for trying to steal all the minerals. Y'all call it colonization. God calls it murder and rape. You clear? 
Now, your textbooks say one thing, and I've been around this planet, and I have studied what happened, and it's called murder and rape, pillaging and stealing. All right, now that I've said what I believe, I'm going to move on, because that in there I'm hot about. Because I didn't know that just because I'm white, uh, if I go to these villages, they're going to take my guts out of me and let me bleed to death as their kids fillet me. Just because I'm white. Boy, I don't like that. Somebody has made some mistakes. So uh, they said to me, you're going to go up there and they're going to kill you. <laughs> I just... I just laughed at him. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> I mean, who would get in a thing with wild lions? I mean, who would do that? <laughs> so uh, this is how it went. I, I told him I ain't doing it. I'm not going out there. Because uh, they told me of, of, of some recent atrocities and it, quite bright. It's not good. And... Uh, I said, I'm not going, fellas. But we've already promised, and we've already set up, and we've already invested expenses. We've done this, and we've done that. I said, I'm sorry. Should have, you should have asked me that. I, I don't agree with the first people that got here, and I don't agree with this going now, and I'm not going to agree with what you do because you're going to go out there, and you're going to call, tell them God can do anything, and, in, and then some kind of opposition is going to come against you. Some witch doctor is going to blast you in the face or your wife and kids or somebody's going to get killed, or something's going to happen, and you're going to quit. So I'm not going. You don't birth babies to let them raise their self. They cannot. So uh, they said, Brother David, we will stay. I said, I don't believe you. Uh, you all got history of being in violence with these people. I'm not doing it. I ain't doing it. But you're the best. It doesn't matter what I am. I'm smart. The reason I'm still alive is because I don't invest in bad decisions. And so uh, about three days I called Ms. Hogan because I was, boy, I was livid about it. I was dead gum them. Put my name on the line. Uh, make all these statements and do all this stuff. I, I didn't condone it. I don't like that. So I called her up. I said, Miss Hogan, if I go out there, they're going to kill me. They'll, because you know me. I'm not bluffing and I'm not backing down. I'm dead. She says, that's yet to be seen. Because this is how we talk. Because what another man implanted in me is death. What she has in her is life. And she said, God said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples. That's what God said. It doesn't matter what these people say. It's not proven that they can kill you yet. I said, wow, thanks. <laughs> I was wanting to be mad and not go. But here you didn't. Now, what am I going to do now? So I went back and told the folks, all right, I'll go. But you got to promise me 10 years, at least 10 years. That's a minimum. And they said, Brother David, God spoke to us. We'll give you 10 years. I said, all right. I, I'm not going to ask you anything else because I know if God spoke to you, and he'll touch somebody and the work will continue. And so now, all right, all of that happened, right? Now, uh, I'm not comfortable. You hear me? It took us three days to get all of our gear together and get the team organized. And this is quite an entourage, you know, and going up into this thing. We're going to stay up there a week, and, and there's no, no Christians, and they're going to kill us, and their ancestral worship and witchcraft people, and you're going to die. You're going to die. It's 100%. The color of my skin is 100% death in that area. You are not welcome. And I wouldn't, I'd have done that the first time. If they'd have done that to the first boat that landed, they wouldn't have had the trouble they had. Excuse me? All right. And so uh, they're doing it now. So they understand. And, and so I thought, oh, boy. So we're going. About, about an hour and a half into the trip, I felt, I felt witchcraft settle on me. I just stopped the truck. And so they pull over. 
I get out, boy, I am, wow, that, they ain't no, the uncomfortable, I have to use a different word, but it's not good for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it is not okay. Then they go to me, what's wrong with you? I said, that river we just crossed, about a kilometer back there, what, what's up with that river? How do you know about that river? I said, I don't know about that river. I just know I want to be back on the other side of that river. Well, Brother David, that's where the Tron Sky starts, is across that river. I said, okay. So you're telling me all I'm feeling is witchcraft? That ain't no deal. Let's go. There ain't no devil they got can, can take me out. His name is Jesus. Yeah. It's settled in heaven, yeah. and it lasts and lives forever. Yeah. I'm immortal. Regardless of what they say and do, don't have an impact on who I am. Yeah. Do you understand? I said, do you understand? Yes. And now it's too late. I'm there. I am not giving up now. Now it's no, the bluff is on now. We're going to do this. Now, all of that happening, and it's heavy spiritual. It's rough. These people have had atrocity after atrocity happen to them. It's endless. The misery and pain and the suffering and so on and so on. And boy, I'm not happy. And we go and go and go, another several hours, bumpity bump and bump, four wheel drive, boom, 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 y'all call it bush. Uh, then people call it home. Do I have to say black? Can I just say people? Is that all right? Yeah. Thank you. And so I, we get to this village finally, and they tell me, well, this is our destination, and we're riding up into it. All of a sudden, this little boy comes running out. Now, what I'm fixing to tell you is beyond bizarre. This little boy comes running out, and it, so the truck stops. You know, the, the South African fellow's driving. He stops, rolls the window. That's on this side over here. And that little boy stuck his head in the window past the driver, and he looked me right in the eyes. And here's what he said. You came. Wow. I go, What? You came. Okay. First of all, I've never been in that part of the world ever. There's no communications out there. Nothing. There's nothing. There's only witchcraft. And it's quite tense. And uh, I said, uh, what, are you, what are you talking about? He said, you need to come with me. I, and he's a little boy. He, he, ain't, he ain't even 12. He's about 11, 10, 11 years old. I said, I'm not going with you anywhere, boy. Dude, you ain't taking me to a trap and get my head chopped off the first five minutes. This ain't happening. I'm not going to eat an AK-47. I ain't doing it. And so I get out because I have to. He said, you need to come with me. I start walking with him, and I told my son Jody, I said, listen to me, son. This is a trap. There ain't no doubt. We're going to die. But this is what I want. When they flinch, I need you to take out at least two esophaguses. He said, got it, Dad. Now, my son's bull. You don't mess with him. Not when I'm involved. You hear me? And I know your little lovey, sloppy, agape, BS world, <laughs> son, don't like this kind of language. You just go back to your little cul-de-sac with your little stupid dog with the cone on his head. <laughs> With the little dumb painted fingernail, you knot heads. What's wrong with you? The dog, let him go for heaven's sake. God, what's the matter with you? Poor dog. Better off with me. At least I'll eat him. <laughs> she whiz. Knuckleheads. So, okay, moving on. <laughs> I ain't going to take it. I'm sorry. Listen, and here's why. Because I, I get, I'm behind this kid, and boy, every sense that I have is at maximum capacity. Red alert. Pegged out on the red line, 100%. Bang, all right? I'm sweating adrenaline. And all of a sudden, these people start filing out of the hut, and it's dozens of them. I told my son, I knew it was a trap. But there's no weapons involved. There's no machetes. There's no AKs. There's no AR-15s. There's no, it's just people. 
and every one of them were pointing at me. And my beard was big, like always it is. Uh, and they, they're talking, and I can't understand them. I got the interpreter, dude, I need information. <laughs> he said, Brother David, they've been waiting on you. I said, what? The glowing man came six months ago. And told him, I'm sending you a white guy from Mexico who raises the dead. <laughs> Bam. He'll be here on this day. He'll be here at this time of the day. And he'll be in a white four-wheel drive Nissan. <laughs> wow. Oops. <laughs> I told you it's a new day. Things are different now. We have help, and it's settled. It ain't up for grabs. It ain't unstable. It's okay. You'll be all right. And I'm looking at him. What did he say? Well, he came here a few times, and he told us about you, and that you, and you're here. You're actually here. I said, all right. What else did he say? He said, when you get here, you're just going to tell us the way that's the truth, and it's going to heal our sick. Now, let's talk about that a little. You understand, I'm a frail piece of grass over here. I am a fading flower. Uh, do you understand that, right? I read it to you two or three times. It's his strength. It's his life that has revived us. Yeah. And it's settled. Yeah. It don't matter what hell says. It don't matter what the distractions are. Because I was disturbed. I was trying to make the right decision. It was already made. <laughs> Dead gummit. More than drives me, makes me hostile. <laughs> Dang. And what if I don't make the right decision? So, because I'm capable of mistakes. I'm a human. You understand that, right? I mean, come on. But do you understand how he trusted us? This is what you got to get out of this. It's awesome. And it's way beyond bizarre. But his trust for the Holy Ghost in us is what he was counting on. He set this whole plan in motion and he never even told me about it. <laughs> I did say yes. And that is awesome and all of that. I, I get it. I do. I really do. But, 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 but. <laughs> I don't like being a fading flower with a frail piece of grass thing and him relying on me so much. That's awesome. We need this in our midst. Come, great one. Glory, majesty, splendor. And then, now this is funny uh, to me. You may not appreciate it like I do, but uh, uh, you know, I do have an odd sense of humor. You have figured that out. <laughs> and I'm not okay with what you are. All of a sudden, this really tall lady comes out. I mean, she's taller than I am, and she must be at least five million years old. I mean, this lady, oh, my God, she's old. And, and, and she's pregnant, and I'm going. You talk about set up. And I thought, oh, my God. I thought they buried Sarah. I thought Sarah was put in a grave somewhere. Didn't I read that? That Abraham loved this woman and she died and they put her in some cave somewhere? How is it that this millions of year old woman is pregnant? That ain't legal. But what of this is? Ah! So she rolls up on me. I'm just looking at her. 
are you Sarah? <laughs> no, I'm not Sarah. I said, how is, you can't be pregnant? What's wrong with you? Dude, you're millions of years old. You can't do this. <laughs> she said, I'm not pregnant. Oh, what is it? Tumors. I said, oh, well, I can handle that. I thought, oh my God, I thought we done found Sarah again. <laughs> Coming with a new, there's going to be another addition to the Bible, some book that we don't know about. <laughs> Dad, come in. Thank you, God. But it is not Sarah. Sarah's really dead. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so I reached over there because I'm, I'm the guy that'll do it. I was tapping. It's hard. It's a tumor. I, Thank you, Father. <laughs> How are you going to explain to y'all we found a new Savior out in somewhere in Africa <laughs> born to a five million year old woman? <laughs> Thank God I don't have to. <laughs> so this is how it went, y'all. I'm serious. Laid my hands upon this lady, and the Holy Ghost whacked her. Do you hear me? Nobody saved yet. We prayed for everybody to be healed. That night, we put up our little tent, set up our little camp, and did our little missionary deal, unreached people group thing. Dude, listen to me. They came in there and got saved by the hundreds. I just wish you could have seen it. It was nice. <laughs> Praying for them. They're getting healed. Look, in the morning I go to relieve my, I'm the early guy in the camp. It's me. Five o'clock every day, here I am out of the tent. And I hear a noise. I'm thinking, uh-oh, hyena or lion. Mm -hmm. And I turn around and I'm in the, 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 the sun's coming up and it's, it's people over there at the gate. So I roll over to them. How's it going? And I can't speak their language, right? So I'm talking to them in English. That didn't work, so I went into Spanish. <laughs> that didn't work either. <laughs> this is how it went. I went in there and roused up the kid, the interpreter. Hey, get up. <laughs> Come out here. You know, <laughs> And as far as you can see, there's people. They want us to pray for them. So we was praying for people from early in the morning to midnight every day, and they're all getting healed. Amen. Do you understand? Do you understand? This is how it rolls in the Holy Ghost fire. Do you hear me? This is what we do, and I'm sorry to y'all, about God not giving me an opportunity because y'all think of this lovey-dovey little fellow with the uh, little ephod on walking through clover is a God. I think of a warrior God. I don't think of that little fellow. And he is in charge. And his word is settled. And he wants these people touched. <laughs> it is he forever. You hear me? You hear me? Yeah. And I want you to get in on this. I want you to let this majesty, splendor, and glory come into your world. I want you to let it happen because you're the one managing that because it's on the planet. Do you hear me? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't believe that. It's evident. I mean, I can see you don't believe but I do. And I'm not interested in baiting you because there ain't one. It's settled. It's majesty, it's glory, and it's splendor. And it's the word of the Lord. It is he forever. 